everyone. I'm Keith Fintelli. Welcome to Psychic Podcast. And this episode is kind of cool because I have a chance to be interviewing a good friend of mine. His name is Jeff Pruitt. Uh, he's a director. He's an actor. He's one of the top stuntmen and stunt coordinators in all of Hollywood. And get this. He's married to this beautiful woman named Sophia Crawford, who also happens to be one of the top stunt women in all of Hollywood. Now, get this. This is what Entertainment Weekly magazine said about Jeff. They listed him as one of Hollywood's top, most creative people. Now, that's pretty impressive. That's, I, I, I enjoyed reading that. Um, Jeff was a stunt coordinator on two of the most uh, successful TV series of all time, Power Rangers and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Not to mention working on over 60 TV shows and movies. Um, uh, it's all over. It's so much, so impressive that uh, I, I, I'm a little embarrassed, but please say hi to my good friend. Yep, come on in. Hi, Keith. Good to talk to you, man. Uh, well, I, let me tell you why I'm so embarrassed. I need to apologize to start off right off the bat. You know, this guy lives here. Him and Sophia live in Atlanta close to us. They're friends of, of, of us. So from time to time, Kathy and I invite Sophia and Jeff over to the house. We have dinner. And they've come over a few times. We talk about movies and the world. And I'm always rambling about Jackie Chan or some of my stuff or whatever. I'm so embarrassed because I knew some of Sophia's history. That I didn't know the extent of your fantastic uh, movie history and TV history. You know, I can only imagine when you drive home after dinner with Sophia, you're probably giggling to each other going, I don't think Vitaly has any clue who I am. <laughs> well, I, I knew all know. of that from, from being a, a, a martial arts kid. And I we used to watch you in tournaments and everything. And you were a big influence on me, especially like with the uh, right leg hook kick. I used to imitate you all the time. So sometimes if you'll watch a behind the scenes of a movie, if I'm doubling a guy or if I'm playing a character and I get to throw a hook kick. That's the Keith Vitale hook kick. Well, but that's so cool. That's, <laughs> the, that's, that's, that's nice to hear. That's really good. Uh, before we start, um, let's give a plug out to, to your restaurant, to your, your coffee shop uh, with Sophia. Uh, what's the name of it? It's uh, Ground and Pound Coffee. It's uh, on Holcomb Bridge Road in Roswell. Right. And um, We've been there many times, my wife, Kathy, and I, you know, it's got entertainment, it's got food. It's a wonderful place. So guys, if you ever uh, come to the north side of Atlanta, please check it out. It's a great place. Now, again, I've got my apology done because it's not that you just worked in Hollywood and all these films and all these TV series. It's the, it's your work is fantastic. Your reels are incredible. Your stunt work is some of the best I've seen, you know, compared to anything I've ever seen coming from, from Hong Kong. But let's start at the beginning. So you, you're from Georgia, right? Yes, I was born and raised in a uh, oh, yes. little small town. Oh, that is small. Where'd you start your martial arts? Um, well, I started training with a guy named Whiten. And well, actually, I, I started when I was like eight years old, training with Maso Gala books, you know, on my own. Because I couldn't get to, I couldn't get to a karate school. And back then, there were very few martial arts schools that would take children. And so I, mean, I used to train it along that way and trying to train the Muay Thai style. And we got, then I trained with Jim Whitten. I went to Lawrence Huff that, you know, great champion. Yeah. Uh, he was a, a police officer in Athens. So around 74, 75, I, I trained there at his place. And then um, Alan Meshagan was another instructor, and just various instructors throughout the years. Uh, it, uh, you ever cross? Uh, you ever come across Mike Moore in Athens? Yes, yes. Uh, Mike Moore uh, actually became a student of of Mr. Huff while I was there, so that's when I first saw him. And then he, uh, when he opened up his own yeah. school, my my baby brother trained under him for a little while. Oh, that's cool. That Mike's one of my best friends. And from time to time, um, you know. So you, you know, what people don't realize this, like. Like talked about a minute ago, you're a neighbor of mine, and, and so is Mike Moore. And so, from time to time, we'll probably get together and grab dinner, and you know, in the future, which is great. I love Mike Moore. I think he's the single toughest human yeah. being on the planet. You know, that's, really, I'd say it a lot, but I don't know of anybody tougher than him. Oh yeah, I I, oh, I saw him. as soon as he first stepped in, I knew I said this guy's the real deal. <laughs> and uh, well, I, I remember seeing him. He, they had some sort of a back in 
those days, it was like in the seventies, early eighties, they had a challenge thing at, at one of the bars where there was like a, a bare knuckle brawl type thing. It was way before right. the UFC and MMA and everything, but anybody could just get in the ring and Mike Moore came in and just wiped everybody out. I think they had no clue who this guy was. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, I'm so glad he's a good guy on our side. He, he's <laughs> such a great guy. But, um, so you were taking, how long did you take martial arts? I mean, um, uh, was it Tang Sudo, a, a Korean style? Oh, yeah. Uh, originally that was with Mr. Huff, you know, Tang Sudo, but when I branched out and did everything I could, you know, along the way. That's yeah, worth it. And, and when I, when I got to California, I trained one of my roommates was one of Dan and Santos instructors. I just, uh, okay. I did try to learn from everybody, you know, but so, I was, by, by the time I got to California, I was mostly interested in, um, the stunt side of things. So all of my thinking was based on, on stunt work and not, not kickboxing. I gotcha. I, I just want to kind of get in your mindset while you were a student taking martial arts, who were some of your heroes and, or, you know, people that inspired you, you know, like Joe Lois, Bruce, I mean, oh. who were the ones that that motivated you? Well, when I first started, well, when I was a kid, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't get to martial arts class. I actually saw martial arts in the old, uh, James Bond movies. And I used to watch uh, samurai films on the weekends. And I was, I was so crazy about martial arts. And yeah. when I saw Bruce Lee and, and Green Hornet, oh man, that did it for me. That guy, he just. It's like everybody, you know, and, and, uh, that I just wanted to be Cato. That's all I wanted. So from then on, that was my goal to be Cato. Yeah. I, you I, know, I, Cato. I don't think people realize the impact Bruce Lee had on the martial arts world. I don't know of anyone in our generation that wasn't inspired and motivated by Bruce Lee. He just, he changed the, he changed everything for all of us. And, uh, he was like our, our hero. We wanted to be just like him. Yeah, and of course he was the perfect specimen and it was really hard to emulate that guy, but I'm so glad we had such a, a wonderful person to be inspired by. So you, you had your, your role models in the martial arts and before you got involved into the, into the uh, production side. So you're already looking in, like you say, being inspired by some of the samurai films and this had the Japanese style as well as, as some of the others. Um, what made you go to Hollywood? What made you go and start? And, and uh, how did it come about getting involved in, into the stunt work? Well, I, early on, I watched, like I said, uh, the Green Hornet and the Wild Wild West. Remember, if you remember the show, the Wild Wild West with uh, Robert Conrad, right, all right. of those guys and the stunts they did. And I used to watch silent films uh, with Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd, these guys. And I, as, as I went along, you know, being inspired by Bruce Lee and everything, I always wanted to combine that kind of, uh, Bruce Lee style fighting with the kind of stunts that Harold Lloyd and Buster Keith did, which eventually Jackie got around to doing, you know, he was inspired by, by those same people. Um, but they did it with a little more of a, a of a Chinese player. And I wanted to kind of mix Hong Kong style and American style together. And actually by the time I got to Hollywood, it was in the late eighties and the stunt coordinators all told me, oh kid, you missed it. If you had been here a few years ago, oh, we could confuse you, but. That stuff, that, that, that karate stuff, that's, that's out now, man. Then it's gone, man. It, we're, we're through that fed. And uh, they thought, you know, I didn't have a chance, but, uh, it turned out that uh, it never went away. Just kept, it just kept growing, you know? So they had to actually come over to my side of things. <laughs> so were you involved with a stunt school or just, a, were you a stunt fighter? Well, I. I like I said, we started training me and the guys, just like Bruce Lee did, training in the backyard, doing, doing stunts. And, and, uh, I, I grew up racing motorcycles, you know, motocross and everything. And so we did all of stunts the way a lot of the stuntmen started in the backyard yeah. and doing stuff with the guys. But then when I got around other stuntmen, I, I met guys here in Georgia who were Hollywood stuntmen who would come here and, and shoot and, and I would get any information I could from them. And then as I finally got to Hollywood, uh, we would actually go over to high balls at someone's house do, so it was not, there weren't anything, wasn't like there was a stunt school or anything like that. It was back in those days, it was usually a stunt coordinator and his, right. his, his, and, and everybody, they would get together, train it. 
if you were lucky enough to, uh, to be able to train with them, if they let you in, you could learn things and, and develop. And, and that's what I did. Did you work on some shows before your big break with the Power Rangers? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I tell you one of the, I, I did a lot of little shows here in Jordan that were just like low budget shows coming to town, but the one show that I did do that you'll know was, uh, it was called, uh, Invasion USA with Chuck oh, Norris. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I came, I remember I was so excited because I saw, uh, uh, various martial arts, like Bob Walsh, different people that were there with Chuck that were his buddies from the martial arts world that I knew from the martial arts magazines and from the tournament scene. So I was so excited just to see those guys, you know, but then I was lucky enough to meet, uh, Chuck stunt double at that time was a guy named, uh, Dar Robbins. I mean, not, I mean, not Dar Robbins, Dar Benjamin, Dar Benjamin, which right, is right. two different art. Yeah. Dar Benjamin. And, and, uh, and he sort of like befriended me and introduced me to the guys and they, they helped me a little bit. Charlie Skeen was the, the late Charlie Skeen. He was one of the stunt guys that gave me advice and everything. And I met a, uh, second unit director. Who was, a, who was an assistant director on the, on the second unit. And, uh, his name was Steve Cohen. And then later, years later, when I got to Hollywood, he was, uh, he was doing some martial arts films and he asked me to come in and work with him. And that, that really gave me a big break in Hollywood. Oh, that's cool. No, that's great. How did you land the role, uh, on Power Rangers? Um, well, because of all of these, these, uh, martial arts moves that I had choreographed, uh, my buddy who was, uh, a top stunt driver and John Stewart, who was also a second unit director. And he, he'd begun directing the first episodes of, of Power Rangers and they were planning on, uh, expanding the show and, and they needed to do more fight scenes and stuff. And the guy, Isaac Florentine, who's a great director now, he wanted to leave and start his directing career. So he had done like the first few episodes and they were just about, you know, with the kids but they were using Japanese footage and they said, you know, we're going to run out of Japanese footage and we need a guy to get to shoot. And John Stewart brought me in and said, this is the guy, this is the guy you need. And immediately right away, uh, I clicked and we just started shooting a uh, hundred, hundred setups a day, just with one camera and just go, go, go five days a week. That's, that's incredible. A hundred setups. So how long would a typical fight scene take? To shoot well it depended on um if i had japanese footage to i would have to choreograph around that and then so we could edit it together but if not um i i would get there early in the morning just before the sun came up look around look at the script and see what i had to shoot that day if i had to shoot an acting scene usually there was a little acting scene before the bite scene started i would i would have to shoot that and then we would uh fight all day long just from sun up until the sun was going down. And that, that was the day. And it depended on what was needed. We usually shot two episodes a week and, uh, just whatever the script, the script, usually it, it had the acting scenes. And then when it came to the fighting, it would just say, insert 60 seconds fighting or insert, you know, 120 seconds fighting. And then I would just get to do whatever I wanted. As long as I stayed within the parameters of uh, children's program. Did you ever double any of the Power Rangers yourself? Well, they always wanted me to be the White Ranger. When when we got the White Ranger going, and uh, Shuki uh, Shuki Levy always tried to get me in that suit, but I was like, "No, man, I've got too much to do. I've got to be. I'm running <laughs> around. I, I even if I have a seat, like uh, on Buffy, they would bring out the chairs and yeah. stuff, and, and and I would never sit down. I would sit two seconds, get up, and go, go, go. So there was no time." So, so tell me this. So would you pre-plan the fight sequences already know where they were, or would you just do them that day of the shoot? Cause you look at the location, you look at the script and go, here's the 60 seconds of fight I'm going to put together. Well, usually like in the movies, I would choreograph everything in advance, go on location scouts, plan everything. And then I would make some adjustments on the day, but I learned very early on for power rangers, I could plan certain stunts. And then I would give each, each stunt person, cause it was a team and I wanted to right. each person in the team. And this was the only time I ever had anyone else choreograph anything. I would let each person in each suit pick his own combination. And then I would add the rest of the 
to it, merge it all together. And that, that's how we did it on, on Buffy. I would, uh, I, a lot of times I would, I would choreograph things in advance and go through with the director or the producers, but I learned that things were changing all the time. And I finally got to the point where the majority of the fights on Buffy, I would just show up uh, an hour before the crew and, and sit there, look around at the set and see what I had to work with. And then oh I would, gosh. I would photograph it. Yeah. And so all of those fights you see on Buffy were choreographed like 60 minutes before the crew arrived. When the crew arrived, I would go through it with Sophia and the stunt people and then we would shoot it. And usually we would shoot uh, two masters and then go in for tighter shots and then uh, I would do like two or three shots with uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, and then we would move on. And that's how we did it. We just, there was no time to spend on it. Just had so much. To... But when I first started that show, Joss Whedon told me, he said, you know, I've learned sir, from experience period. that we only have one or two kicks, one or two punches. That's it. If we don't have time to shoot a whole bite. And I said, if you let me use Sophia, we can't. And so he more, he said, when he, once he saw how it worked, he said, yeah, just shoot with Sophia and then we'll bring Sarah in and, and do a couple of moves. Because at first, when I first started the show, I doubled uh, the character Spike when he came on. I don't know if you know these characters. There's a vampire named Spike and I doubled him and Sarah and I would do the fight. Uh, Sophia would do the fight with us, not doubled. And they, we would all like have to do var variations of everything. And it just took, it took too long. It was the old Hollywood way of shooting. And I said, we've got to just let Sophia do it and then use Sarah in a couple of spots. And then it'll be, you know, it's the only way we're going to make it and, and actually get what we need. And then once they saw that that worked, just that's how we shot the show. All right, let's go back to Power Rangers for a second. Is that where you met sure. Sophia? Um, well, actually, you know, because I always watched Hong Kong films. And, uh, I lived with Asian stuff did, and we would go to the Hong Kong cinema in, uh, Alhambra, California. You know? And, uh, I used to watch her in the, in the Hong Kong movies and I didn't know it, but she actually, I was in a film called mission of justice that I choreographed it, played the, the friend of the hero. And she saw me in that movie. And she said, when she was in Hong Kong, she said, if I go to America, I want to meet that guy. <laughs> and when I saw her in Hong Kong. I said, oh man, I wish she would come to America. I would like to meet her sometime. And then I was working on a film and, uh, uh, the director of this really, really low budget film came by the set and he said, Jeff, I'm doing this thing. Can you come and help me on it as soon as you're done? And I said, yeah, well, who, who's in it? And she, he said, well, we don't have any big name stars or anything. He said, I'm going to play a part and you, you can play a part if you want to just, I just need to. We're trying to scrape together the money and do this low budget thing. And it's got a lot of fights in it. And if you could just come in and I said, well, can I bring the stunt guys? He said, no, we've got, uh, we're going to hire our own people out in Las Vegas. And I said, well, who do you have? And he said, well, I don't know, but they're taking care of it. And I said, oh boy. So I brought a couple of my guys with me and we went out there and, and I couldn't believe it. There was Sophia Crawford and, uh, she was the, uh, co-star. And in in so I felt so bad though, because the guys that they got were not stuck in, they were from local martial arts school, but you know, it's different. Oh, they, yeah. they didn't know how to react. They knew how to fight, but they didn't know how to react. And that's all it is. It's stunt work reacting and stuff. So we had to work with them, work with them because she had come from Hong Kong working with these great, awesome stunt men. And now we had to try to make a fight with these guys that are just stiff as a board, you know, oh, yeah, I, mostly. You can't have a fight if they're not reacting. All you have are people throwing kicks. And so when you were doing, it seems like, of course, the techniques were and the fight sequences on Power Rangers were fun and, you know, totally different than the ones on Buffy and the Vampire Slayer or, or other movies. So, so when you were working with, um, with the crew and the Power Rangers, I would just, I guess all the Power Rangers were martial artists, the ones inside the costumes. Um, well, inside the costume, I had a, I had a 12 man stunt team. Okay. And inside the cops, you know, were always, uh, stunt people. Good. So the, the actors never played the actual power rangers in the, in the helmets. They would do acting scenes, holding the helmet when it was off. Okay. As soon as they put it on, it would be the stunt. 
but they did their own fights uh, as what we call civilians, as the kids from school right. walking through the park and then these right. But um, uh, you know, we had some some great martial artists, Austin, Jason. Uh, but then some of the other ones were like uh, gymnasts, you know. Uh, 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 Amy Jo, she was a gymnast, and it helps. Uh, some of them, some of them had no no training whatsoever, but we would just pick little things where they would do one or two movements, and then and then I would cut to the other people and back and forth. And a couple of times I would double them. Mostly it was it was them, but the martial arts guys they 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 had a great time. They were young and energetic. Well, how cool! And it was fun. Let's let's say you're on the set and you see misses. You know, they're doing moves, jumps, and they're misses. Do you call cut or does the director call cut when you see a miss? I'm the director, so it's just me. There's oh. no, no other Oh, director, I got you. Because you're, you're but, actually putting it all together. But, that makes but, sense. Just to say, you said something earlier that I've never heard before, that you actually allowed, like, the Power Rangers and some of the stunt people to contribute. And that's going to be one of my questions. Sure. Did they ever come to you and go... Jeff, you're making this guy look good, the blue guy look good, or the red guy look good, or the or the girl look good. Or oh. did you say, do you ever ask for the input? Now, you've got to remember, Sophia's been in, like, what, over 30 movies. She's as talented as yeah. anybody you'll ever work with. Did you ever go to her, say, give me input, or did you just really have a plan and you say, here's here's what it is? Well, I had a, I would have a plan and say, here's what it is, but the, the the fights that we did, each each ranger would get to pick a combination that they would put together with the guys and then show it to me. That makes know? sense. And so, and that way I would, they would do whatever I asked them to do, but then they would also get to do a combination that they came up with. And so everybody got to contribute because we made so many fights, it would have been so boring for them for to just, and it, so it made them feel like, you know, they're participating and having fun. And it was, it was like, um, it was like a game. It was always play on Power Rangers. Um, I used to, uh, there was a lady at Fox, uh, Fox Kids that her single job, once we got so popular, you know, people started uh, focusing in on, is it too violent for kids? And we had all of these rules we had to, to follow, you know, we never actually hit anybody in the face on the, on a TV show, in the movie we did, but on the TV show, we couldn't hit anybody in the face. And I remember I would get these memos from this lady and it would always, she had to say something and she would come up with something like, I remember she told me that Jason Frank, one of the actors, he, uh, she said, well, can you make him smile and look happy when he's fighting? Because he looks like he's mean and he wants to hurt someone and we can't have him. <laughs> and we tried it. He looked crazy trying to <laughs> smile and, uh, so I told him, you know, we'll, we'll do this. We'll, what we'll have to do is give her something to, uh, complain about so that we can say, oh, okay, we'll take that out. And then she would feel like she did her job and leave us alone. So I would come up with something like every other fight scene. I remember I put like a putty head against a tree and, and put some ketchup in the eyeballs. And then I had one of the guys spin around and punch it and then blood shot out the eyes. And so I, I knew I wasn't going to use that, but I did that. So she would then write her memo and I would get to keep the stuff that I really liked because she always had to take something out. So I would keep the stuff I really liked. And then that stuff, we would, I, would, I would go, oh, you're right. That was too much. I don't know why we did that. That was, you're right. And then that, that's, that's how we made power enters, you know. Well, you know, I always thought a novel idea would be you get on the movie set, you're choreographing it, you're the stunt coordinator, and you take your talent. And you have them show you their talent and find out from them individually what they do best. And then maybe you could create something around it. You did that. I've never been on a movie set ever like that. You know, the uh, movies I've been on from Jackie Chan to, you know, all the others, you have a, you have a, a fight coordinator and they put their sequence together and you have to adhere to it. You just have to do it. It might not be your best yeah. side, might not be your best kicks. It might be things you can't do. But there's no input at all, none. I mean, you know, it's just, here's what it is, do it. But, you know, I always thought what a novel idea is to find out beforehand and find out what they can do best. And then you're utilizing what they do best into the fight sequences at the same time. Well, I, I've always done that. I've always, 
when I worked with martial artists before or stunt people before, I would find out what kind of falls they could do or what kind of uh, techniques they were good at and stuff yeah. that they wanted to show off or maybe something that uh, a special thing they've never been able to do before. And I would try to find a way to work it into the fight in some way. And, um, it, and it works great. Um, uh, we had uh, a situation with, with uh, Sophia where I just started on, on Buffy and not, not on Power Rangers. On Power Rangers, each, each character, uh, they had to learn the particular poses and we called it kabuki acting. You had to act exactly as they did in Japan. Right. You know, this kind of talk like this, you know, everybody gets, go, okay. You know, that's, and we wouldn't, uh, that sometimes the guy in the helmet would be Japanese and I would just have him go, and then that's how we would go. And then we'd, each guy had his special pose, you know? So they all had to do that. Except Sophia, I added some, some of the poses she did in Hong Kong. We actually gave that to Pink Ranger. Too. And um, a funny thing is we did an episode on Buffy and they, they would sort of like, sometimes the writers would make a little inside joke and call, have a character called Buffy Pink Ranger or something. And then, so we did a thing where she was having a dream sequence. Buffy was daydreaming about saving this cute guy that she wanted to date. And they said, okay, let, let Sophia do her Power Ranger pose. So we did, we had Sarah do it, we had Sophia do oh, it, so but cute. I don't think, I don't think it made it too much into the show. We, we, we were cutting so fast that you mm -hmm. can't really, unless you're a real Power Ranger fan, you wouldn't notice it, but we used to do stuff like that. But I choreographed the Buffy character to match Sophia. It was all stuff that Sophia could do that felt good for her and like what kick she used or what punch. I would choreograph everything to fit her. And that's why it, it just uh, would uh, rock the way it did, you know, because it, it, it fit her. Well, let me uh, finish the, uh, on uh, the Power Rangers on this one statement. You had such a positive impact on millions of people without even knowing about it. It was a fun, you know, TV series, but you affected millions, including me personally. I would go pick up my grandson. He's five or six, you know, and I pick him up from after school. I take him home. And, you know, I couldn't wait. He wanted to be the Red Ranger. I'd either be the blue one. We always took our sabers outside. We, I was a moger half the time, one of the bad guys. We, but we, you know, we actually loved your show. And it had such a positive impact on us. Think of the millions of people around the, around the planet that because of your work, you were just like, you influenced people like me to go play with their kids and have fun like that. So that's, that's gotta be just, you gotta be so proud of that. Is there anything else you're proud of? What's the most thing that you're proudest of, uh, with your time on Power Rangers? Well, exactly that, because now I meet stunt people now that, that, that they grew up watching Power Rangers and got into martial arts or stunts because of Power Rangers. And so those guys, it, it makes me feel good, you know, to, to know that, uh, that I had, because they're having, I, I had the influence on them, uh, that, uh, the wild, wild West guys had on me, you mm -hmm. know, and luckily for me, when I, when I became a stunt coordinator, I was able to hire some of those guys from the wild, wild West to come and work like Gene LaBelle, who worked with Bruce Lee. And, uh, 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 Charlie Paterni, who was on all the Star Trek episodes right. and Batman and everything. I got to hire those guys that were like heroes of mine and, and bring them over and, and work with them. So yeah. that, right. that's cool. I mean, we didn't even know each other back then, but yeah. yet I'm running around the yard with my grandson and I right. am imitating everything that you put it together like that. So that's, that's wonderful. So you've had your hands in the pie that have influenced it and impacted millions of people. So I, I just want to thank you for being on the show. And uh, it's been a privilege and you're such a good friend of mine. And everybody out there, thank if you like this episode, and I hope you did because I like I liked the uh, uh, interviewing it myself. Uh, I want you to please like it and share it. And of course, subscribe. Until next time, ciao.